Greetings and salutations, this is Fella Cat and welcome back to Monster Loves You. Pretty sure this will be the last episode for the series. Journey to Carmen. Although there's a lot of replay, replay value here. Probably will be playing it again myself, for the channel at least. You're hiding in a shiny wood building. Two humans are holding hands in front of another human. Aha! He makes a lot of noise about a witness. The other two look around, disappointed at the empty room. Aha! Quietly seek out another human to be witness. I have high kindness, so... You sneak into the yard outside where another human is gardening. You make a polite coffee noise until he puts the hose on him to come look. Draw him into the building. He follows you towards the room with the other humans. He pauses and looks down at his filthy garden and clothes into the nice clean floor. Get him to help. You reach out to pat the human on the back and make reassuring noises. He's hesitant, but then nods and kicks his boots off. Okay. His socked feet make no sound as he approaches the other humans to bear witness. As you leave, he winks at you. That is grand. The extra human doffs his hat and stands patiently while the others talk and kiss. Everyone is very happy and you made it happen. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's click the happy face. Mupsy Morel outlines a plan for defense against the humans. Fruitcake! I've seen it, friends! Every year the humans offer to each other, but nobody wants it. She can't possibly sh she think, think. But fruitcake is a weapon. Oh, she does. Mupsy goes on. If they fear it, so it must be a weapon. Perhaps a deadly poison. One we can steal and turn against the humans if we need to. Explain the truth. Human fruitcake is delicious. Humans give fruitcakes as gifts. Sort of. Everyone is shocked. You've said surprising things before, but this is pretty blatant. Mupsy mutters something to her friend, too quiet for anyone else to overhear. Look at Mupsy ex expectantly. Mupsy mutters, You are known for your generosity, so perhaps you are right, but I still want to get my claws on some fruitcake. Okay. This is interesting. You're in a secluded hiding place near the park. Suddenly, you see a human grab her stomach and fall over. Now's your time to shine. That's the spirit. What will you do? Be like the spine doctor. Doctor her good. You lay her down on her back gently and feel her belly. This rumbling calls for milkweed is sure settle her such complaints. Well, go find some. You dash into the park where you find a few pods of the stuff. Using your claws, you cut open the pods and see strain the contents into the human's mouth. See what happens. She moans and tries to push you away, but you hold her in still and keep the medicine coming, just like the spine doctor taught you. Okay. Success! The human is soon standing unaided. Other humans come to help her, but she hardly needs her assistance. Off you go! Wow, advanced surgery? The human brushes milkweed fluff from her chin and looks around for her savior. You're sure she's watching as you lip away. Cool! I see what's happening here. Oh! This is how well monsters think of humans. Okay. Humans are ambivalent. Okay. So, the monsters need more work. Oh, did, sorry, didn't mean to... Yeah, I, I know. I got it. Sorry, I misclicked. Let's politic a little more. the house one. I don't know what that means. Blistery proposes a new plan to keep an eye on the humans. What is it? We'll take over an abandoned house in Carmen. Someone is in there at all times and takes extensive notes on everything they do. Interesting idea. <laughs> Several other elders seem to like the idea very much. They argue about who, where to establish their spy house, though. Carmen has many empty buildings. Which shall we use? 
Ruin everything, suggest somewhere humans will look bad, suggest a place that will encourage understanding. Or we need eyes in many buildings. Hmm. My ferocity is not that high, but I know my cleverness is decent. The expedition sets out immediately. Hiding in the unused upper floor of the library, they observe humans reading and learning. Make sure they see that humans are smart. In short order, several elders learn to read for the first time. They seem impressed with their unsuspecting human subjects. Okay. This is really cool, so I'm gonna hopefully avoid the monster human war. Oh, look, it's another kindness one, probably. That's what I'm really good at. You're splashing through rain gutters when you hear spy a human on the steps below. She snuffles and sobs into a tissue, a crumpled letter lies beside her. Help the human! You slide down the gutter and squat beside the human. She squeaks and holds very still when you don't attack her. Okay. Finally, she says, You want to know why I'm crying? My parents say I must marry Ernst, but I do not love him. I just wish he'd go away. Help her, no matter how dangerous they may be. Offer to harmlessly scare him away, or to- What? I'm not eating her! Uh, I know my bravery is pretty high, but my ferocity is pretty low, so let's, let's, uh, let's try the bravery one. She blinks away her tears and starts to laugh, then sees that you're serious. She takes your claw in your hand, in her hand, and you go inside. Yes? Where two older humans interrupt their dinner to scream and jump away from you. Great, well begun is half done. The older humans call themselves and listen to you for, for you suppose, the first time. They agree to reconsider the wedding. Yes! The younger human smiles and squeezes you, not trying to choke you, just to show you how much she appreciates her help. Okay. This is great! I like this game. This is cute and fun. Let's be funny. Greed Blitz, puffed up with multi-symbolic importance, addresses the el other elders. My fellow monster, and he begins, I propose we meet the humans halfway. What, in the middle of the forest? <laughs> You're not that stupid. No, he clears his throat. I think we should learn from them and adopt human ways to become more civilized. Agree and explain some human innovations. Requires cleverness, which I have. You make a persuasive case. Under your tutelage, the other gathered elders learn much about organize, organization, govern, the, okay, whatever, the human way. Okay. Cool. Before I'm done, they're gonna love each other. But not like that. I mean, maybe like that. I don't know. An older human and many children sit in rows in a hot, echoing room. The older human drones on while the, two, while the children look at everything but him. The windows, the clocks, even your hiding spot. What is the older human saying? He's telling them about lifeology. You know about that, but judging from his expression, he doesn't seem to find it very interesting himself. Step in and show him how to teach! You burst in the classroom and everyone stops to stare at you. For one precious moment, nobody does anything. Uh, okay. Talk about the attitude behind doctoring. I have a high kindness, so... You begin by telling them that one must know one's own heart to work with the hearts of others. The children listen as you go on about compassion and its use in healing. Go on. You explain how kindness is the only real virtue, the origin of all others, and by the time the class is over, you're hopeful that some of the children will go on to become doctors. Score! You leave, surrounded by thankful humans. This is great. They're gonna be best bestie buddies by the time I'm done. Let's take the... Jaggery drinks deeper, Majar's cider. He belches and the air goes wavy. Watch the ferocious elder as he drinks some more. Jaggery raises one claw. Humans... Humans are stupid. Lazy. Worthless. Stupid. And I'll fight any monster who says otherwise. Ah, smart humans brought us cider. The big monster hadn't thought of that. Jagger gets very serious very quickly. The other monsters nod as they consider this important fact. Blow their minds just a little bit. You say, and if they thought of that, what else have they thought of? Haha, <laughs> this is cool!
That looks like maybe a rescue scenario. Let's go with that. Uh. Excuse me. You watch as an elderly human tries to fix his house. He looks up at the leaky roof of the side as it starts to rain and goes inside. How bad is the leak? Looks like a trickle of water will get into the attic from this storm. It might do some damage to the human's house. He also left his tools out. Well, my bravery is not that high, so... But, maybe brave the rain and danger to repair the roof? Success! The human here is hammering above. He emerges just as you leap away. The repair is finished. Okay. Oh my god! People love monsters! Yay! And what about monsters? Monsters like people, but they don't love them yet. We're gonna fix that. It's a sneaky schnook. Let's go to the sneaky schnook. God plows and rolls a big map showing the surrounding region. She points one pincer at a series of red circles. Say what? These are places where I've seen humans drop things. I think we should put garbage cans there. Why? Gobclaws says so we can harvest the things I drop. Then we can study them and understand them better. Great. Help her develop the plan. You get things in order to help Gobclaws arrange the cans so it'll be easier to collect later. Yay! Organization! You and Gobclaws st sneak through the woods to, s to the new designated human evidence collection locations, or DHECLs. <laughs> and play, place the D, D, C, and place the extra cans. Yay, acronyms! Almost immediately, humans begin dropping trash into the cans, including many, many candy wrappers with bits of sweetness still inside. Yay, licking dirty candy wrappers. Okay. Gobclaws prepares a report based on the preliminary findings that everyone agrees that she is quite clever, and so are you. Yes. Oh boy, we're, we're making them adore people. Seepy time. You're just concluding a thrilling speech to the other elders. Finally, something goes smoothly. What in snack is that noise? Old Hamrag falls fell asleep in the middle of your speech. Again, his pig-like snout and four nostrils give his snores a poignant and thunderous quality. Cough gently. You had better success, we forget the move, and Hamrag keeps snoring. Talk louder to be heard over the snoring! Hamrag wakes up. He looks around and says, You know, humans are pretty nasty. They sharpen rocks to cut things with them. Also, they kill each other all the time. Explain that humans don't do that anymore. Actually, we do, but whatever. You remind everyone that Hamrag's information is far out of date. Humans forge knives and... What? Stop it! D go away! Sorry. Humans forge knives now, and they only rarely kill each other. The old monster says, suppose you're right. Okay. Oh, this is amazing! You're walking down an alley with a new paintbrush, almost new, fresh from the garbage, when suddenly, it's there. A human. A human. Its face is red and angry, and it's coming right at you! Stop, drop, and roll. That just confused him, and also you a little. Okay. Its face is red and angry, and it's coming right- Okay, angry humans are bad news. The human growls in a deep voice, You came to the wrong neighborhood, monster. I'll teach you a lesson, good and proper. Admit fears about a coming monster-human conflict. You try your best to explain the problem, and to your surprise, you're not interrupted by a beating. The human doesn't exactly agree with your take on the situation, but you've clearly given it food for thought. Cool. Look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. This is great. We're gonna be bestie friends forever now. Just watch. You sneak up to an open window. A human sits on an overstuffed chair. Her back is to a desk covered in- Wait a minute, it's maps with red X's on them. Look closer. They're showing off locations of the monster towns alongside a badly drawn sketch of a monster with an eye stuck through it. What to do? Hmm. 
Hmm. Alter the maps to teach her something. You walk into the study quietly and begin moving the maps, maps around. Keep going. You realize that you can use the maps to tell a story. You draw additional pictures here and there, rearranging the maps to show the human what she got wrong. Keep going. You draw an artifact where Blot stuck one up, then make a spiral where you got lost that one time. Yes, this will help. Now put it back. The human soon wakes up. You watch through the window as she studies the changed maps. After a while, she wipes a tear from one eye. You've gotten through! Okay! Your fellow elders debate. Are humans more dangerous now? Is it time to reveal ourselves? Rise to take your turn. The air grows still. Birds stop singing. The silence is revengeful. You turn and see the oldest monster sitting on a hovel roof dwarfing you. It's watching you. <laughs> the oldest monster tilts its huge head and raises one of its three scaly eyebrows. Admit fear, but insist you must learn more. You explain that fear is no excuse for ignorance, especially as the latter can cure the former. The other elders applaud. The oldest nods, maybe? Okay. So how do I... Um. As you walk through Portant Square, you think on your past. Life hasn't always been easy, but you build up your reputation. You are quite well respected. Yes, well respected indeed. The monsters have always feared and loathed humans in the past. Your work, your work towards improving relations has paid off. Monsters have come to respect and like them. Well done. Meanwhile, humans, who once hated all monster kind, have come to understand that monsters aren't terrible evil things. Rumor has it humans think pretty well of you. Okay. Shattering your reverie, a terrible commotion erupts. Elders and younger monsters alike are milling around in a great mob. What is it? Lots drops from a nearby roof. Humans! Humans are coming this way! What? Bliss, she says, that's wonderful! We can talk to them! It's true. Relations have been warming up. Both monsters and humans meet deep in the wellness. There's considerable shuffling of feet and paws. Everyone wants to talk, but nobody wants to make the first move. If only some monster were to speak up. Yes, if only. A few of the other elders are looking at you, strangely enough. Welcome to the humans as friends, duh. Everyone breathes a sigh of relief as you put up your best claw forward. It's the first step of a long journey. A journey on which monster and human will cooperate in all things. What happened next? The end. <laughs> awesome. And so, monsters and humans worked, lived, and played together for many happy generations to come. Hooray for the future. The end. Oh, it was super clever. I didn't realize that. Super clever. Completely honest and kind. Ferocity probably would have been okay, but it's only it would have been a 50-50 chance, I think. Awesome. Universal prosperity. You dared to find the narrow gap between fear and hate. Now humans and monsters work together for the benefit of all. And I think that's the best ending I could possibly have gotten there. That was a lot of fun. I'm going to keep playing until I get the other endings, but I suggest you go and try it for yourself. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.